Oh, my door's open. I don't want that. Hello everybody, welcome back and happy Taylor's version day to those who celebrate. <laughs> These products that I'm about to test have been pretty popular online. I've seen them coming up on the feeds and I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts. And hopefully I'm gonna do something that could be adapted easily into a Halloween look. We'll see. Oh, I do have a pumpkin up there, but you can't really see it. Oh well. Happy Halloween. I'm gonna start with this, which is, oh, you know what, actually, no, I'm gonna start with some lip balm because my lips are feeling really dry. In that case, let's actually start with one of these. These are the Kylie Skin Lip Oils. Wait, hang on. They're Kylie Skin? Why are they not Kylie Cosmetics? I was sent these in PR, which is kind of strange because I didn't actually realize that I was on the PR list, but pretty cool. And I've got the shades Pomegranate, Passion Fruit, Strawberry, and Coconut. So I'm just gonna, let's give them all a smell before I put one on. Ooh, okay. That smells just of straight up coconut. That's the clear one. I feel like I will probably like the strawberry one best. Oh my God, that smells like strawberry laces, the sweet. Do you have those in America and other countries or is that just a UK thing? Oh, but I do love passion fruit. Oh, that does not smell like passion fruit to me. That's very disappointing. It smells more like melon. It's not gonna be that one. And then finally we've got pomegranate grenade. Oh, <laughs> hang on a minute. Okay, wait, never mind. I think it's in another language because the others have all got translations. See, to me, this smells like cherry. Well, strawberry is the winner. Okay, so there's pretty much no color. That is so bizarre. That is not the formula I was expecting at all. I thought it was gonna be like a glossy oil and be really shiny, but it's not really giving that much shine, but it's not sticky at all. It's given a little bit of shine, but not as much as I was expecting. They look like they're gonna be really glossy and some lip oils are like really oily and glossy, but it feels more like a lip Balm. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Lovely little doe foot. I love this kind of shaped doe foot, like the big squishy round ones. That feels really nice. Not what I was expecting, but nice nonetheless. It feels really good. Let's get into my skin. So I'm using the Charlotte's Magic Water Cream. This is their new launch. This sounds like it will be a bit more up my street than the original Charlotte's Magic Cream because it's supposed to be like a lighter, more watery kind of version, I guess. Right off the bat, it definitely feels a lot thinner. There's no scent to it, which is nice. It's not fragranced at all. Mm, 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 mm. Let's do the neck as well. Okay, yeah, this feels like my kind of moisturizer. It feels very hydrating, but it's quite thin. It's giving my skin a really nice glow. Let's see if it sort of like dries down at all a little bit because at the moment it is looking quite oily and I'm not sure, like I originally thought that maybe this would be better for oily skin because it's a more watery version, but maybe not because it's still kind of like slippery. Let's give it a minute to sort of like settle and see what it ends up like. I mean, yeah, my skin looks glowing and gorgeous. I feel like it's starting to sink in a little bit. I like the feeling of that, but I probably wouldn't use it just by itself and then go straight in with makeup unless my skin was really dry. I would probably put like a mattifying primer over the top of it. I need to put on some SPF, which I would normally do. Actually, am I even gonna go outside today? I've been doing a couple of Halloween looks over on TikTok and Instagram and a couple of people said, oh, I really hope there's a full video on this, but there's not gonna be any full Halloween makeup videos. I am obviously gonna be uploading them onto my shorts as well, but in terms of full in-depth Halloween tutorials, I've done them before in the past, but Halloween, I guess not everybody celebrates Halloween, not everybody's interested in Halloween. The Halloween videos that I used to post, they would take me ages to film, ages to edit, they a lot of effort and they would get like half the amount of views that my usual videos would get and so for me it just wasn't worth it to film like a full Halloween video because not everyone is interested in it so I'm sorry to those of you that do love Halloween but this year there is no full Halloween tutorials the Fenty Beauty foundation stick I have seen lots of hype about this the ease drops blur and smooth tint stick i've got the shades four and five they did send these over to me i think i'm gonna go for the shade four because i think i use shade three in the like dropper squeezy dropper ones or maybe i do use shade four i will most definitely need to bronze up my neck because i've not fake tanned so this is what the packaging looks like it's kind of cool it's got like this faded beige color and then the lid with i'm guessing is that rihanna's signature or is it just a random squiggle okay that definitely does not say rihanna Anna, uh, I could not tell you. Oh, oh God, oh my God. I thought the whole thing had just come flying out, but it was just this little cap that goes on top of it. Whew. So this, oh wait, does it keep going? Oh, it does keep going. I was gonna say that's the amount of product you get, but for some reason it also like, what? Is it supposed to do that? Hang on, I'm scared it's gonna fall out. It kind of comes out like that, which is unusual. And then let's just wind it. Oh no way, oh, I don't know if I was supposed to do that. Just to make this a fair test, because my face is extra shiny at the moment, I'm gonna use this uh, primer, which is an e.l.f. one. I have tested it before. I do like it. Let's just go in, I guess. Ooh, 
Hang on, let me zoom you in. The thing that is so difficult about the winter is that it is so overcast right now. I'm filming this video in the morning. There is barely any natural light, so I have to kind of rely on my studio lights, but I way prefer using natural light, especially with foundations and stuff. But hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I've got to say, that has gone on so smooth. It kind of melts when it touches your skin. And amazingly, the formula feels thin. Quite often with stick foundations, the formula's really thick and they go on quite cakey. Okay, let's ignore the fact that this is not quite my shade at the moment, but I can definitely bronze up my neck. So first impressions, it doesn't really give much coverage at all. It is blending really nicely. Let's see if I can add a bit more coverage to some of these scars. Hmm. Yeah, I would say that's buildable actually. I would quite happily just wear this by itself if I was just popping out quickly and I wanted to just put on a tiny bit of coverage. I would say it's buildable. You're, oh my God, this looks so crazy with my neck. Only thing is I do not want to get this all over my t-shirt. <laughs> Let me just do that for now. It feels very lightweight as well. And it kind of just gives the appearance of like a tinted moisturizer kind of thing. I have a little bit of dryness around my jawline where I've been using my tretinoin. Um, so it kind of like peels off every couple of days. But it's actually disguising that pretty well. I think it looks pretty nice. Like it's not covered everything, but it's added a nice layer of coverage. And now I just need to go in with some concealer on some extra areas, but I think it looks very nice. I have just remembered that I was gonna use these brushes, which I still can do. Actually, you know what? I don't even think there's a buffing brush in here anyway. But this is a new collection from Spectrum Brushes and it is the Timber and Nightmare Before Christmas 30th anniversary, which I didn't even realize, collection. And they have brushes. They have this set that comes in a little box and it's a sponge and puff trio. And look at the makeup sponge. It is a little Jack Skellington pumpkin head. It's even got like a little dimple on the top of it, which I don't even think Jack has that, but it's very cute and I did actually go and just like run this under some water. It did feel pretty tough, um, like dense. Oh my God, it matches the little head that's like sat up here. It felt, it does feel a little bit more dense than the sponges that I tend to use, but after I've dampened it, it definitely feels a lot softer. But I feel like it's too cute to use. It, it's so cute. I don't want to destroy it and get foundation all over it. But it also comes with these. Um, I, It would have been cool if this had some kind of design on it, but this is just basically like a black powder puff. And it does say the Nightmare Before Christmas on it but I feel like it would have been cool if this had like a Jack Skellington face pattern on one side maybe but this is like a little sponge puff thing one of these ones and it's got like a faux leather sort of sally design on this side and you can use this for concealer and stuff I do not have a new concealer to test let's test the little spongy thing so let's try this little puff well, that was easy. It is really, really soft and it's blending everything really quickly, really easily. Let's do the nose. Oh, it kind of feels like the type of applicator that you get in a cushion foundation. But I have no idea if maybe somebody had tagged me in the post on Spectrum or if, I don't know, maybe somebody that works there knows that I like Nightmare Before Christmas or maybe it was just a random coincidence, but they sent me a message on Instagram being like, hey, Sophie, we'd love to send you our new Nightmare Before Christmas collection. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like I was gonna buy that anyway. I like that. Have there been any viral blushes and bronzers recently? I don't know. I've personally not seen any, but if there have been and I've missed something, then please let me know down below because I don't have anything new to test. I'm just using my Mitchell, what is this called? Curve case in the light shade. Oh my God. Can you hear that rain? Let's see what brushes we actually get in here. Oh my god, look at this powder brush. Wait, is it even a powder brush? It's got the little bat neck collar thing. I swear it's a bat in the film. <laughs> I just made that up. Oh, they feel really soft. I'm not too sure what I would use this brush for because it's kind of flat, but also pointed. And then obviously you can keep them in here as like your little brush holder, but I'm just gonna check. There is a foundation brush in here, but it's a flat foundation brush. And to be honest, I never really use these, which is a shame. Oh, these look lovely. That is a nice one. That's like a little angled. I guess you could use this for blush. I would probably use this also for like contour. Then I think this is the last face brush this is either you again you could use this for highlighter oh that's very nice and soft you could use that for highlighter you could use it to powder your under eyes oh these are just so cute a really fluffy soft nice 
blending brush. This kind of brush is like a little domed one. I love using this for my inner corners and also for like highlighting down my nose. I guess this is like a graphic art eyeliner brush, but it's a little bit thick and like frayed on the ends. Oh, okay. This is a little, ooh, that's actually very thin. Hallelujah. A angled brush that's actually thin enough to do like little tiny little strokes. Angled brush. And then we've got a spoolie on the other end. So really good for eyebrows. Another slightly flatter blending brush. And then last but not least, look at that tiny little face. A little flat shader brush, which is good for like packing on shimmers and stuff. I'm just going to put on one of these. I know it's not like technically a viral product, but I'm just going to use it anyway because it is new to me. I've not seen anybody talking about these though. These are from Nude Sticks and it's the Nudies Matte and Glow Core blushes. This one is the shade Peach Pearl. Okay, so the middle of it is supposed to have like a highlighter and then the outer part is the blush, but I feel like in that swatch, I mostly just got the blush. But I love Nude Sticks. Yeah, I feel like that's just putting the blush on and it's covering up the highlighter. I I love Nude Sticks blushes. I think they're so nice. Let's try this one maybe. Okay, that actually blended out a little bit sheerer than I thought it would maybe. That blended really, really easily. I'm gonna put a little bit more on though because we know how I feel about blush. Oh, that is beautiful. And I can actually see a bit of a glow coming through, although maybe it's just because my face is really glowy. That is really nice. The star of this video is the Huda Beauty new pressed powders, which hallelujah, do not have an ingredient in them that I am allergic to. I was heartbroken to discover that I was allergic to my original Huda Beauty powder because in my eyes, it's one of the best powders in the world. But they came out with pressed ones. I don't like pressed powders as much to set my makeup, but we will give them a try. And I've got the Cherry Blossom Cake, which looks lighter to me than, ooh, well, that was a very nice magnetic closure. Oh, it does come with a little, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it comes with a free powder puff. It's just like the thinnest little sponge in the world. And also how are you supposed to hold that and like get it not the best. In the package that they sent it with, they sent over these tiny little miniature powder puffs. And I've got to say, I have been using these the past couple of days because they sent like a few of each. And it's actually a really good size for getting into your under eyes. So these are definitely approved by me. They're very, very soft. Although in my eyes, slightly unnecessary because if you have a bigger powder puff, you don't really need a small, like the mini ones because most powder puffs have got a pointed bit anyway. I'm going to use my little Nightmare Before Christmas one. Um, and the other shade I've got is called Cupcake, which I'm hoping Hoping it's gonna be a light shade. Cupcake. Okay, it's a really nice pale shade. So let's just re-blend that crease. Load up my puff like that. And set. Also, guys, these pressed ones are not fragranced. There's no like crazy strong smell. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I put on quite a lot, but it still felt sticky like a little bit sticky, like it wasn't fully set. And so I've just put on a little bit more. And now that I've put on a bit more, it looks really dry. No! <laughs> Can you see when I'm smiling? Like it's really, really emphasizing my fine lines and it looks very dry. Let me try putting slightly less on the other side and see if it does the same thing. <laughs> Let's try on this side, re-blending out that concealer, taking my already loaded up powder puff. Yes, yeah, you can kind of feel on the powder puff like when I'm setting it, when it still feels a little bit sticky. So I don't think I've put quite as much on that side. It still feels a little bit sticky, so I worry that it would crease. Okay, but maybe it won't. I've put less on that side. Let's see by the end of this video if it started to crease or anything weird. If I'm being honest, I can tell from the initial application that I do not like that as much as the original loose powder, which is such a shame because I think this is supposed to be kind of like a pressed version. This powder puff is lovely though, I will say. Let's see if it will kind of bake my nose how I usually do. <sighs> Let's take this little brush. You can take that off if you want to. It's just like a little rubber band. Okay, so let's use this powder brush to just set the rest of my face. I don't know why I just did that accent. I've got to say, maybe it's not supposed to be the type of powder that is completely mattifying because as you can just see, I've just put that on my forehead, but I feel like I need to go in, like back in with more. Like it doesn't pick up that much on the brush or on the powder puff from the first sort of application. Like I did feel like I, and do feel like I need to keep dipping back in, but maybe that's supposed to be the case. Like it says it's a pressed brightening and setting powder. And on the box, let's have a read. It says, Jenny Press 
powder under eyes and anywhere you were looking for a brightened, lifted effect. Blend immediately for a seamless finish. Dust across face to set makeup. I don't know, I'm just a little bit confused. You know what? I'm actually gutted. I'm gonna give you a close up of my face. So before I used this powder, my skin was looking, obviously it was looking glowy and I have just mattified it. I am aware of that, but the foundation itself looked really smooth and had kind of like skimmed over my pores. But since putting on this powder, God, my face still feels sticky. When I'm looking up close at my skin, I feel like it's really emphasized my pores and I look quite cakey, which was the complete opposite of what I was looking like before. I don't know. Can you see what I mean on my cheeks? Like, I feel like it's emphasized my pores here and like my smile lines are already starting to look like they've got loads of product in them. I just, mm. and I'm just really sad about it and disappointed. But yeah, my, um, I think my under eyes look dry. That is devastating. I really thought I was gonna love that and because I love the original powder, but I'm just not a fan. If anyone else has tried this and has made it work, like, let me know. Right guys, give me a sec. I'm just gonna do my powder bronzer, powder blush and my eyebrows and I'll be right back to do my eyes. <laughs> By the way, if anyone was interested, I am actually, after this video, I have not yet listened to the five new Vault tracks on 1989 Taylor's version, and I am gonna be filming my reaction to that after this video, but I wanted to have some makeup on, so I've held off just so I can film my reaction. And that will be on my second channel. After doing all of that, I feel like my face is already starting to get shiny again. Like my, okay, obviously my cheeks are because I've just put shit tons of highlighter on them, but my forehead and stuff, and like here, I'm feeling like I need to powder again. And I know that the products that I used were glowy underneath, but not any more glowy than my regular tinted moisturizers, so I'm very confused. So up next, I've got a few different things which I have seen everywhere. One of them being this new brand called Raban, which I think is a, it's, it's Paco Raban basically, but just in makeup form. And they did a whole launch event for this and I've seen loads of influencers using it. Maybe because everyone got the same PR package. I don't know, but it looks really nice from what I've seen. And there's a few like, actually interesting, innovative things. For example, they've launched a top coat. Oh, interesting. It's called Euphoria, which they've definitely kind of taken on the Euphoria kind of theme because it's a glitter mascara top coat and the packaging is glittery. There's a couple of lip products. There's another mascara. There's the things that I'm most interested in are these mini little eyeshadow duos because I've seen some people swatching these and like putting them on and they look so sparkly. And there's also this, which is called a glitter Glitter Shot Multi-Use Glitter Amplifier. And it says you can use it alone or on top of makeup to add glitter effect and highlight to the area of your choice, or you can mix it with another texture to transform it into a different finish. And it kind of looks like water, like it's this weird consistency, but then you shake it up and it turns into a bloody duochrome pinky blue, why is it not picking up on camera? highlighter. I've got this light in a half magic PR package and it's apparently what Donnie Davy uses. I have also got some half magic products to test, but let me just see if I can light this up and you can actually see like what I'm on about with the sparkles. Can you see how like, can you see the glitter? Maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it because I'm also going to be adapting this look into like a fairy or siren mermaid kind of Halloween look. I've not fully decided yet. I'm going to put some of that on the back of my hand and then oh, I'm kind of scared because it's liquid tap some onto my cheeks just to add an extra bit of glitter. Oh my God, and you need to keep shaking it because all the glitter kind of like settles to the bottom. On my hand and up close, it's so beautiful. It's like a pinky blue duochrome, but I'm not sure if that's even gonna come across on my skin. Ooh, wait, no, I think it kind of is. Ooh, wait, I think you can kind of see the reflex. Can you see? Oh my God, wow, okay. And is it drying? Oh my God, wait. Hang on, I'm excited by this because it's sitting on top of my makeup and it is like a blue, fine sort of like blue glitter. I mean, it looks stunning on camera. I've got to say like my cheek looks wet, but it seems to dry. Like it's dry and now it feels tacky. So it's not like gonna just dissolve all my makeup. Oh my God, this is, why is that so exciting to me? Like, does that not look stunning on my skin? It's not something that I would usually go for, but I think for like a more out there makeup look, I also, like I mentioned, I got sent a PR package from Half Magic. They've come up with some new eyeshadows, some new colorful mascaras, and some new shades of their glitter. There's a gold one and there's a 
turquoisey blue one. So I'm gonna use this as well as some of these and the Rabanne eyeshadows. So I've got two of these Iphoria mini palettes. I've got the Macaron shade. I actually really like the packaging. I think it looks really cool and futuristic. So this one is Macaron, a green shimmer and a pink shimmer. Oh my God, it kind of feels like cream. Huh, okay. Interesting, it's like a very light wash of colour. Although not as much sparkle as I'd hoped. I'd seen some of these be swatched and they were like stunning. Maybe there's higher hopes for this one. This is the put a ring on it palette. Ooh, that shade in there, like the pink, funnily enough, looks very similar. Oh my God, that, that formula feels completely different. This one is a duochrome. <gasps> Okay, wait, that is more like it. Can you see that shade here? It's like a pink gold duochrome. It's really hard to capture the duochrome on camera. That feels so smooth and it's got really like fine little glitters in it. That one is a lot more impressive than that other palette. And then let's test the other shade. But yeah, that eyeshadow looks really similar to the one that Taylor wore in the Eras tour film. The other shade is kind of like a taupe shimmer which is very pigmented but it doesn't have any little sparkles in it which is kind of disappointing because i really wanted some sparkles but that pink is really nice they're interesting color pairings i've got to say but interesting how those formulas don't seem to be consistent like that one seems a lot nicer than the first one that i swatched i'm gonna use half magic mermaculate maybe that is telling me that i should do a mermaid look rather than a fairy look. So these half magic eyeshadows actually come with a little cardboard compostable packaging. And then the idea is that you pop these into a, <gasps> no, oh no, it's smashed. Okay, I'm gonna have to be really careful, but hopefully you can see, this is like a duochrome, oh my God. It's like a duochrome bluey purple. Oh, I'm sorry, that just smashes the Raban shades out of the park. Half magic is just, oh. Donnie Davy is a bloody genius. I'm gonna take my little shimmer packing brush. Let's just start packing it on to my eyelid. Oh my God, wait, I think you can even see the different tones. Like when I have my eye like this and then when I do that and when I move, it looks kind of green in some lights as well. Oh my God, it's like a bluey purple. But then when it's actually on my eyes, it kind of looks green. Wait, but they also have this other shade, which is called Blushing Lizard. And Blushing Lizard is like your classic blue brown sort of color. Oh my God, wait, but it's got more pinky purple in there. Okay, wait, you can actually kind of see the duochrome of that one. I'm gonna take a slightly fluffier brush and I'm gonna see if I'm able to just pack this on, but also kind of blend out the edges. And yes, you absolutely can do that. It's still blended really nicely. I'd recommend packing it on first and then sort of blending it out just so that you can get like the max amount of pigment and least amount of fallout. I think maybe in order to see duochromes, you need like slightly darker lighting, which I'll try and show you at the end of the look. If you just go over the edges, it seems to like blend out quite nicely. That color in itself is just stunning. Then I'm gonna take a bit of this and I'm gonna take this pinky gold shade and I'm going to put this on the center of my lids. No, definitely a finger, finger jobby. You know what I mean. And I kind of want to mix these shades to make a sort of whimsical, multicolored, glittery mess. <laughs> I feel like that's not given me what I hoped it would give me. On the other eye, I'm gonna try this one, which is the um, Blushing Chameleon shade from Half Magic. But yeah, like even the formula of that one, I don't even know if it's picking up on camera, but that one is so much more foiled and sparkly than the Raban one. Like, can you see the difference? It's giving a similar sort of effect though, which is interesting. Let's also put a bit of the Raban on there as well. And maybe now I have layered too many shades, but makeup is all about being creative, having fun. Okay. If I'm honest, I don't even really know what I'm doing here. I'm just channeling my inner Donny Davy and layering different shimmers and seeing what they look like together and hoping for the best. I'm a little bit disappointed with those Raban shadows. Maybe I need to try them by myself or maybe it's just because I am comparing them to Half Magic, but I'm just more impressed with the Half Magic shades. That is the honest truth of it, guys. I'm gonna take that little small brush and take the same blue onto my lower lash line. Let's take the little pinky color. It's just not sticking the way that I hoped that it would. Next, I'm taking one of the glitter liners by Half Magic. This is the shade Murkwise, which again, going with the mermaid kind of theme. It looks like this. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but you're about to witness. I don't know how well you can see on camera, but I kind of just done a few little dots using the glitter. I have these gems that I got on Amazon and I'm gonna take the sort of like bluey turquoise color ones. 
think it looks kind of cool. I wish I had smaller ones of these, but I don't. I have got some smaller blue ones though, so I might just put on a couple of these. By the way, wax pencil, life-changing. See, the problem is when I start adding gems, I then just want to add gems. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I had no idea where that look was gonna go, but I'm actually really happy with it. I think it looks very cute. Obviously not an everyday wearable kind of look, but I think it looks very pretty. And if you want to see how I adapt this into something Halloween-y, then uh, definitely follow my TikTok and Instagram. I'm gonna use the Half Magic Mascara called Teal with it. Ooh. On my lower lashes. Okay, the brush looks kind of similar to like Maybelline Sky High kind of vibes kind of just blends in with the eyeshadow. And then this is the Raban Mascara, the original black one. The brush doesn't look like anything crazy. I've just got to hope and pray that this doesn't smudge everywhere. It's literally giving me nothing. I'm trying to wiggle up my root. Okay, I guess it's building a tiny bit, but I feel like whenever I take the brush through my lashes, it's just taking out any volume or any product. I'm gonna use this one instead because I know that it works. It's the Benefit Fan Fest. I'm gonna take this NYX eyeliner in Turquoise Storm. Bit of a theme here, I don't know if you've noticed. And I'm putting that in my waterline. Let's take this Raban Duochrome Pink, put that on my inner corners. I'm actually just gonna take a little bit of this Studio London powder and just put a little bit all over because as much as I do love the glowy look, I just know that this makeup is not gonna last all day. So for lips, I've obviously got the Kylie lip oils, which I tried one of those at the start and it was actually really nice. But I also have the Raban Love Balm Glowy Tinted Lip Balms. I really like the packaging of these. Whoa, okay, maybe not that one. They don't smell of anything. That one looks gorgeous though. It's a really pretty peachy color. And that one was Kiss My Neck. I'm gonna go with this one, which is called Makeup Sex because uh, it looks right on my street. It has the little logo sort of embossed in the top of it, which I think is kind of cool, although that's swiftly going to disappear. Oh, okay. It really is just a lip balm, like there's barely any colour in it. It's almost a little bit light, like it, I think it washes out my lips a little bit, like it's added a little bit of colour. Oh no. Actually up close it doesn't look great, like it feels really nice, but it's kind of like clinging in all the gaps in my lips. Doesn't smell or taste of anything, which is very unusual. Okay, I'm actually really keen now to try the peachy kind of shade to see if this one shows up more, but let me test it on my hand first. That one maybe has a tiny bit more colour. It feels very moisturizing. I will give it that. That one has a tiny bit more color maybe, but it's a little bit sort of gloopy feeling on my lips. I'm not fully sure how to describe it. I just feel like it needs a little bit more liquid and like it needs to, not liquid because it's a balm, but maybe a little bit more oil to make it a little bit more slippery because I feel like it's just sort of bunching up a little bit and kind of just settling into the fine lines of my lips. I don't know if I've explained that very well. It's not my favorite formula for tinted lip balms. That is a damn shame. I'm gonna go with MAC Strip Down. Oh my God, whenever I hear MAC Strip Down now, it just makes me think of that Liam Payne song and like his really funny dancing. <laughs> you know I love it when the music stuff, but go and strip that down for me. Baby. Yeah, I have to say, I definitely preferred the Kylie formula of like the lip oils. And now to finish this all off, now that my mascara is dry, am I now going to ruin my makeup? Maybe, who knows? I really want to try this glitter mascara top coat. <gasps> I have never tried anything like this. It's really subtle. I don't even know if you can see, but it's actually kind of cool. I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna be going and wearing this on a daily. It's a little bit tricky to actually deposit it onto your lashes, but I feel like just in the right kind of light, you can see the little glitter flex. It might be quite cool for like a Christmas party or a New Year's party or something. Let me try on my lower lashes. Obviously your average person for everyday makeup is not gonna want a glitter mascara, but I think for certain looks, it's actually pretty cool. Let's try it with this magical torch that Donny Davy sent in the PR package. Well, I mean, obviously not Donny Davy herself, but look at the sparkles on my eyes. Oh my God. I look at all the different sparkles going on in my eyes right now. Well, that is me done. And honestly, I had a few hiccups along the way, but I'm really happy with how this makeup has turned out. I know that it's not like your everyday kind of makeup look. And I know it is a bit weird and it's a bit out there, but I'm happy with it. I had fun. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I will leave everything down below that I used. And I am off to go film my reaction to the 1989 Vault Tracks. I hope you guys are all doing good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all the glitteriness. Um, if you want to see how I turn this into a Halloween makeup look, go check out my TikTok. And I mean, yeah, you could do anything like this. It, you don't have to be scary on Halloween. You could do something really fun and glittery and be like a fairy. You could be a mermaid with this kind of makeup look. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.